There were a few shofar blasts <laughs> coming from upstairs. But uh, this daughter's name is Justice Hope. And the Lord named her when I was pregnant with her because um, we were going through some things. And he said, I want you to know that I am your hope for justice, right? Not a wish, but like hope as in keep your expectation in the fact that I am your justice. That means he gets the last word on absolutely everything. And that includes everything that you personally care about. You couldn't care more than he cares. And sometimes the fight is to continue to care and to not get numb and callous. And um, she birthed uh, our grandson and his name is Caleb. And um, the Lord highlighted two things during worship for me about that birth. And I'm, I'm finishing quickly because I don't want to take your time. Um, that there were two moments where it was really um, beyond intense. It was scary. And um, one was uh, she began to hemorrhage. And, you know, being a home birth, that's a little... A little different than being in the hospital. They had everything that they needed, but still, you know, you're like, there's a moment, you know, where is this going to turn around? And uh, before that, when she was still in labor, there was, um, he, the baby just would not drop. And, you know, to be present in something that is that intense, justice, hope, giving birth to Caleb. Yeah, do you hear um, there was, there was one thing that they were able to do that like made all the difference in the world, but it was, it was excruciating for her and for us to watch, you know, and you felt so helpless and so out of control. And, um, it was the most beautiful thing, but the most scary thing. And I believe that, um, you know, it's tonight and today all day, I've just felt especially with the worship, like there is a depth of maturity that the body of Christ, that you have grown into throughout this. And like, let that truth of that settle in, like things that used to would have freaked you out, you know, and we all freak out in our own ways, but you, you faced and you've overcome and you've wrestled through with the Lord and we're at the tail end of, of birthing, of justice, birthing the next generation of leaders. And one of the definitions for the name Caleb is just, is a, is a dog. That's the word in Hebrew. But it's specifically the character traits of a dog that is faithful and loyal and, um, you know, tenacious and aggressive and hangs in there. And that is who we are. That's who we've grown to be. And I want the enemy to know it's been worth every bit of it, every bit of it. And we're prepared for the final stages of this birthing. And there may be moments where we're, you know, it's, it's intense and scary and we need to blow the shofar and all the things, but we're not going to flinch because we are sure of who our God is and where we are headed. And we need to remember in, in these next few weeks, whatever it looks like or doesn't look, look like. A couple of things. One is we're prepared for this. You know, Justice's body was made to do what it did, and it was hard, but she did it, you know? And love. There is, there is no replacement for love, and love looks like something. It looks like being generous when you're not sure you have enough. It looks like being kind, fully present with the person that's right in front of you and seeing them like Jesus does, and not caring if they even know who Jesus is. And, and just the nuances of what love looks like coming through you, that's really the, the most simple way to look at what the kingdom of God looks like coming through every one of us, is love. A practical, real, sacrificial, extravagant expression of love. 
and we're ready for it. And so what I was saying about worship is I just so appreciated the worship here today because there's a maturity about it. Um, you know, I'm used to having words for the whole thing and all that. So, but, but to be in the presence of musicians who have, it's like aged wine. I don't even really like wine, but it's, um, there's, there's a maturing that they have been through individually, but as, as a band that's played together, they hadn't played together, I think in three years. Is that right, you guys? Anyway, I don't know who to ask. But it's been a while, but they just fit, you know, right in pocket with each other. And, and that sound that we heard all day today was the sound of a mature bride. Like we really are growing up. And I just, just wanna speak that to your spirit. You really are growing up. You're doing better than you think you are. All right, one last thing. This is just a practical thing. So the books, um, we have a lot left and we are so happy to share them with you. If you were unable to get a book or books today um, because you're just in a season where your budget is tight and this is, there was not room in the budget for that right now, it would be our honor to give you whatever you feel like the Holy Spirit wants you to, to have off the table. So as you leave tonight, if there's one, two, or three books that you feel like you're supposed to have and you cannot pay for them, please feel free to grab them with zero guilt. Nobody comes into the house of the Lord not leaving with what they need. So if there's something you need, take it. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. The guilt only starts if you take four books or more. Because that means you took at least two of one. I'm just kidding. It was like, she probably disagrees with me on that. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I just want to invite uh, the presence of the Lord to this place. And uh, I want to ask you if you'll just hold both your hands out like this to receive. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you come into this place in increased presence. We know you are here already, but there is something about the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. And I ask that your manifest presence would come into this room and that you would just pour into everyone that is here tonight. Presence, sweet presence. Maybe a presence they haven't felt in a long time. Maybe for some, a presence they have never felt. Where there's been dry souls, dry spirits, that it be like refreshing water, like spring waters, fresh spring waters for them. <clears throat> so just keep your hands hold in front of you. Now, I'm just going to tell you that he's releasing healing right now in this room. Steve has already been speaking earlier of healing. We had testimony of several. And i um, just going to tell you the way you'll know. This is a conversation I had with the Holy Spirit before the meeting. Is if your hands begin to shake, he is healing you of something. And I see some of those. And if your hands have begun, it's going to be like both of them, just a gentle shake. It means he's pouring healing into you right now. I'm just going to ask you to lift your hands up. If that's not only those who you look at your hands like, oh my goodness, they are shaking. Then lift your hand up to receive fully the healing he has for you even right now. Go ahead and lift your hand. Yeah. Okay. It's a good mini. We're just going to stay here just for a moment. Let your healing power be increased in this place. Your healing power be increased in this place, Lord. From the top of their heads to the sole of their feet, 
release healing power. The kingdom of God comes in power. Okay, there it's increasing. We're going to stay with it because it's increasing. It's increasing. Now raise your hands up if your hands, you can tell that it's on. If the person beside you doesn't see it and you see their hand like, hey, by the way, your hand is shaking. You're being healed of something. It doesn't even matter if you didn't know what it was. We got so many things I've been trying to make us sick with. You cannot have anything diagnosable you know of, and he's still healing you of it. <clears throat> a little more, a little more. <sighs> Holy Spirit, just release that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And if you knew of something you need to be healed of, assume that's what he's healing you of. Let healing flow in this room. Let healing flow in this room. Let healing flow in this room. For the rest of you, just enjoy the presence. Presence, because that heals you too. Sweet presence. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, you can be seated. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> All right, from either before, earlier in the day, I think Steve had counted there were seven who had been healed. And even right now, you just know you were healed. The pain left. Something happened. You're like, I was just healed. So either you already stood up before. If you could just stand up saying you were healed today, we just want to see, see that. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Thank you, Jesus. That was like 30 or 40. And he's working on the rest of you. Some of you just like, well, he came on me. I don't ex know exactly what I'm being healed of, but assume that presence is going to stay on you during the meeting. All right. We just, we're not going to go long. Be out of here by midnight. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> And, um, you know, it was really, I was really enjoying uh, Andrew and what you were sharing. It was just really good. Lo loads of revelation, you know, that's, um, and then we both kind of throw out a lot of revelation. So iron sharpens iron or makes revelation jump. So he's saying things and I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, he's talking about the monocles pizza and, and um, wasn't this spelling but, of course, I just like, well, I know what it is, but I just uh, look, looked it up. First definition, corrective lens, monocles. And so they're getting this, y'all were eating monocles pizza. Well, you had to hear, like, if you're just joining now and you weren't here for that meeting, then now you have to go listen to that one because that's the only way it, it makes sense. But it's even in that. And so that was one of the amazing things. But, um, you know, there's something... Um, God shares his secrets with friends and there's something to be honored and respected with how Andrew has advanced in his relationship with the Lord. He's being told secrets and important secrets, secrets for our nations. I don't know if y'all heard that, that word of the Lord over who wins the election and even if there's an attempt at a steal, uh, that's just something he got from the Lord there and it's consistent with all those dreams he got at the beginning of the year that were released in the book they had. So I just, um, I just want to appreciate that, honor that, Andrew, and um, keep sharing the way you share, you know, that's, that's good. He just does it humbly. It's who he is. And, you know, that's a good example uh, for all of us. And it was just, um, I just felt like there was a lot of meaningful revelation there. And, um, you know, the whole thing, still, I'm, I'm still, I keep talking to him. I was like, now tell me again about that dream because I process his stuff as well, what the Lord's sharing with me. And I thought that was the whole thing of the sign of Jonah, which is resurrection life and how that applies now and uh, how the Lord, you know, Jonah's transportation to Nineveh um, was in a whale. And it's just interesting. Andrew Whalen is telling us about the sign of Jonah. It's like the Lord just like, they go, when, when do you think they're going to figure this part out? You know, it's like, I just love it. That's what's so fun about 
prophetic and revelation and all that kind of stuff. And so it really has been special. But I'm going to dig in just a little bit with us, mainly to go into some more prophetic acts. Um, tied into what was some of you may be asking, why was the theme strike the ground seven times? And though you know it's been awesome so far, we're like, well, we haven't really. Andrew briefly mentioned the strike the ground. And I want to take you to what the story is and then what the Lord's saying for us uh, today. And um, I believe there's, there's a couple supernatural things he wants to do in our midst and that's mainly we want to, what we want to facilitate today. So if you want to open your Bibles to 2 Kings and chapter 13, because this is where the story of that we get the striking the ground seven times, even though it doesn't specifically say strike the ground seven times, there's a reason we've added a couple to it, or one or two. So verse 14, Elisha had become sick with... Then Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. We'll just stop there for a second. You ever thought, why did he say that? If you know the rest of the story here, you don't even like, why did he say that? The chariots of Israel and their horsemen. Well, he's remembering that this is Elisha back in verse, well, chapter six, it's where the Syrians were again the enemy and Gehazi, Elisha's servant, tells Elisha, He's, we're surrounded, we're surrounded by the enemy, the Syrian army, they're coming to get us. The reason they're doing that is because the whole enemy army is out to stop the prophetic. Because you have the army of the Syrians, the king meets with his generals, and, okay, which one of you is betraying me over and over because they keep knowing our plan. We keep setting up an ambush for Israel and they know it ahead of time. One of the generals says, none of us are, are the traitors. What it is is they have somebody who sees, his name is Elisha, and he's the prophet, and every plan you do, he's, he's listening in on us right now, he's eavesdropping, he has some NSA high intel stuff, but he doesn't use NSA, and so he's listening right now, and so he makes it the entire campaign of the military, the king of Syria, we gotta stop the prophetic, we gotta stop the seeing eye, and so they surround him, and Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, is shaking. But Elisha, he quite calmly says, Lord, please open his eyes. Clearly not talking about his natural eyes, but he did need corrective lens. But he didn't need to see better with his natural eyes. He just needed his spirit eyes to be open. And suddenly his servant could see the chariots and the horsemen on the mountains surrounding the Syrians. So he's, this is what he's remembering who Elisha was, the great victory that they had. And so I believe that's why there's a, a comment there. And of course, the rest of that story is Elisha then just leads them. They all are blinded. The prophet blinds the whole army. So he sees for God and then blinds the whole army, like one man who can see. It's just a pretty incredible story. And then he leads them and takes them to the king of Israel. Say, well, anyway, that's a whole other story. But this is relevant to where we're going. Verse 15, and Elisha said to him, take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. This is to the king, Joash. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it, and Elisha put his hands on the king's hand, hands, and he said, open the east window, and he, but now you will strike Syria only three times. And this ends up being the last act of Elisha in his life, they throw a body on him and he comes to life. So Elisha's last act, this is his last prophetic act that he participates in. And then the last thing he does is resurrection life. It's tied into the fact that the Lord, I want to remind you, this was pointed out to us by, as I was sharing this morning, Andrew had a dream early in the year where this was the theme for this. He saw us here. This was the theme, strike the, theme, strike the ground. And it was being shared in Steve's building, and we were speaking here, and I was the closing speaker. So this is kind of a prophetic orchestration that's taking place right now. And a ton of great prophetic stuff has already happened today, but we're going to be obedient. This is part of, you have seen the credibility of Andrew, his ministry, the dreams. And so you see there's a reason why 
we responded to them as well and said, yeah, this is, this is of God. We don't do it blindly, but it's like there's credibility there. And then we respond, and so this is the meeting that's happening here. So we're going to go into a very important fulfillment of a prophetic act that was, that's supposed to take place and want to explain it better for you and what took place. Because what you'll find out, the last verse in 2 Kings 13 says, And Jehoash, the son of Jehoaz, recaptured from the hand of Ben-Hadid, the son of Haziel, the cities which he had taken out of the hand of Jehoaz. Joash defeated him and recaptured the cities of Israel. This goes into the remarkable power of a God-directed prophetic act. It's like we're going to find out, like just on the plus, like they recaptured all their cities because their one authorized king did a little bit mealy-mouthed obedience. But he struck the ground three times, and it didn't matter. It wasn't like got a new weapon. They got new anything. It was just a prophet. This is like straightforward prophetic act brought three victories over the enemy, and they recaptured all the cities of Israel. He and fluky anyway. I don't know about this prophetic stuff. We need to be more pragmatic and practical. This, you know, you do this, you get better weapons, you outnumber the enemy, then you beat them. This idea of doing this and like God's going to do some magic for you, well, he did. There was nothing else. So that's, this is encouragement of the prophetic, prophetic obedience and the power that is in that and doing so. So we want to be aware of that, but what we're going to do, I believe, is going to be monumental. It ties into, that was the rest of the part of the dream Andrew got and what the Lord told me earlier today. He's like, this is a very big day. This is a very important day. And if you understand, so he's like, well, that was a king. Well, do you know that that was part of the celebration in Revelation 4 and 5 after Jesus was revealed? He was the lamb that was slain, and there was a new song that begun sung in heaven. You have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. So Joash was the king, and this king obeyed. He didn't obey with as much passion and zeal as he should, but he did obey, and out of that obedience, there was victory for the whole nation. So I believe literally something we're going to do here. Of course, we know we have a good online audience as well. So this is participation, hopefully, into multiple nations. And this participation that we're going to invite you into is a prophetic act where we believe and understand that prophetic acts done in response and obedience to the Lord, not just because we feel like being weird. This is not because we feel like being weird. This is literally, it's a dream Andrew gave, and I'm asking the Lord, and I'm like, yes. Steve hears it, and he goes, yes, as well. And so this whole thing is, is from that. And so it would be foolish for us to, this would be like Elisha telling him, and here's just a couple words we want to be aware of. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance, that word deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria is the word Yeshua. So it is the Lord's salvation or the Lord's Yeshua that is talking about, for you must strike the Syrians at Aphek. What is that word, Aphek? I know it's not pronounced that way, but I like to pronounce it that way. Because um, I have no idea, so Aphek probably. So anyway, that word means strength or fortress. You must defeat the enemy in their fortress, in their strong place, in their stronghold, where they think they're strong. This is where you must defeat them. I don't know if you all know, but the Northwest, Washington and Oregon, this is, the deep state thinks they have already taken the Northwest. <laughs> thinks. The Lord showed me, I don't know if it was here, I, I, somewhere in the Northwest 10, 15 years ago, I said the Lord showed me it's a massive eagle's nest, the Northwest. That's Washington, Oregon, Idaho. It's a massive one. Of course, the enemy knows where God has ordained something incredible. And so it's not coincidental that Steve, facing the teeth of Jezebelian attacks for 27 years, has made his base and foundation here. And so we're in an Elijah building 
an Elijah pavilion right here. And this is where the Lord's saying, do this prophetic act for the whole nation, maybe the whole globe. And I'll do something. I'll do something. You don't have to do it. You don't, don't think pragmat, pragmatic, like, well, do this and then go do so. No, this, this is like all on its own. Still with me? Okay. Take the arrows. So he took them and he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and he stopped. All right, we've got to give you this word. The word strike. Strike the ground. <laughs> I knew that was a key word. I was going like, what did he, what, what, what was wrong? Three times. And it's like, no, do five, six or more. I'll tell you why we want to do seven times. What, what, what's wrong with three? And other than, I mean, they're kind of, it seems a little bit obvious. Okay, there wasn't enough passion about it. He's doing, you know, I'm obeying, but I don't really get how this is going to translate anything. And we don't want to do that today. Okay, that's part of why I'm talking a few minutes here. We got to get your, your mind and spirit engaged. Even though it's late, late in the day, we've been in meetings all day long and some of us are over 30, and so you're tired and things like that. <clears throat> but we want to show, we have to get our spirits stirred to show enough firepower for what we got to do. Because literally, the entire judgment was on, you did it passively and not energetically. Therefore, you're going to win back your cities. Because he knew it meant that he wasn't really sold on it. So we have to be sold on prophetic acts. When he directs them, we have to go, okay, this is God ordained. This is God orchestrated. This is the time. This is the place. And so I'm going to talk just a few minutes more to convince you of that. But at first, I got to tell you the word naka, to strike. It means literally to strike severely, to beat, to clap, to give wounds, to strike the ground. So it was like. hurt you got to hurt the ground with what you're doing we're gonna try not to hurt ourselves when we do this in a few minutes here but those of us who are over 30 you can hurt yourself you strike the ground <laughs> too severely okay but a couple more things you know there and the revelation just coming so fast and furious sometimes is like, as you know, sometimes when, if those who watch the program's like, I can't even process all of it. It's coming too much and never can get to all of it. But we're going to try to not like fire hydrant, fire hose you with it. But there is like, the Lord is reminding me of, of why this place is special, why Oregon is. One is the enemy thinks that he has a stronghold here. So you must strike him at an AFEC. You must strike him where he thinks he's got it sewn up. He's got it locked down. And then back in 2017, August 21 of 2017, there was the famous, that wasn't a lunar eclipse. It was a solar, a total solar eclipse. The first one was seven years ago this year, you know, it was August 21. And there was a path of totality that's 70 miles wide, and it went all across the nation. I was going to get the picture put up, and then I was like, you have to get permission. If somebody figures it out that's listening to me back there, and you get, there's a picture of the United States, and there, it looks like a seat belt across the United States. It starts right at Albany and goes all the way to Charleston. And that's the path of totality. And I had a prophetic word back in 2017 about that pathway of totality. And even why it started here, I mentioned. We were barely friends at all, I think, with Steve and Doreen. And I said, this signifies this ministry and the whole prophetic is going to go to a whole nother level as well. And, and so where was it? For those who don't know, it started literally... We're within five, 10 miles of where the 100% technical, where, where did the path of totality, the total solar eclipse started? And so it was here. It's right where we're at, you know? And, and Salem, which is, what, 20 miles from here, was the first of seven Salems. Salem 
Charleston was the end. So you have this, looks like a seat belt put over the United States. And there is seven Salem's in the path, starting with Salem, Oregon. And Salem, of course, is the word shalom. And shalom means more than peace. It's like peace and joy, well-being. It's like, you know, way full word of, of good stuff. And I gave a word back then that the enemy was trying to do something to this country, bad stuff. But the Lord was processing was promising that there is a seatbelt over us as a nation. He's taking care of his promises over us. I don't think that was it. That's August 12, 2045. Somebody's way. You're way ahead of me something. I don't know. So if you find it, you find it. But um, I'll keep talking. So what was, what was great about that is that I, you can see where we're at right now. Why would the Lord give that promise seven years ago this year? Seven years ago, August, not that long ago. And we're facing what we're facing. Why? Especially if you think of seatbelt on a plane. When do they make you put your seatbelt on? Things are, we're going to have a little, we're going to have a few bumps here. Let's get the seatbelt on. So he's like, okay, you're going to have a few, a few bumps. Boy, have we had some bumps, right? And so there might still be more bumps, but I believe the Lord is promising victory for us. And the Syrians represent the oppressors. They were called, and Hazel, king of Syria, oppressed Israel. They're the, you know, that's, that's what they were known for is oppressing them, their quality of life and everything. And the Lord just stepped in through Elisha. The people never were that obedient. They were still worshiping Baal. It tells you before and after. This was not, these people have so, my people call by my name, humble themselves, pray, get rid of Baal. They didn't do it. They had one prophet who activated this whole thing. And so it's, I'll read you the verse if you don't believe that. Verse 23, but the Lord was gracious to them and had compassion on them and regarded them. That was them, that's not a word for us, but that was them because they were still in Baal worship, but there was such a grace, a prophetic grace. It's the power of the prophetic. So you had this one guy who knew how to operate in the prophetic that had already saved them from the Syrians before, over and over, and his ability to see, and then see the opportunity for the nation to do great damage to the enemy. So here's the other thing. So we had the total solar eclipse of this year. Was that April 8? It's hard to believe it was that long ago, wasn't it? Four, eight. April 8, so that's seven years apart, and there's a total path of what they call the total path of darkness was 115 miles wide. The one back in 2017 was 70 miles wide. The 70 speaks into things, but I know that's going to tax you with one too many numbers to look into. We're not going to give you that one right now. But that path of totality from this year went through seven Ninevehs. Two of them were full eclipse. Seven were partial. Other five were partial eclipse for a total of seven. Any way you look at it, seven Ninevehs, seven states that had Nineveh in it. You can look that up. And so we had seven Salems seven years ago, peace. Seven Ninevehs this year, sign of Jonah. Nineveh ultimately was a city country. There we go. Nineveh was a city country destined to be saved by God. So he sends Jonah. Jonah has the greatest anointing. You say, what's well, because they repented. Well, he knew, because Jonah confirmed to us later, he says, that's why I don't like to go. You send me to a place and you never judge him. Every time you send me, it's because you're going to save him. So the sign of Jonah is I'm going to save them. There is no judgment. So this is all weaving together pretty, pretty nicely. See what I'm saying? Okay. Let me see if we're, we're just about ready for. Oh. See, that was August 21st of 2017. 
That's eighth month, 21st day. Romans 8, 21. I should just read you exactly rather than giving it to you. This goes with all the messages today, starting with mine. 821, because I actually quoted from here, and I said, creation is not groaning and travailing for Jesus to come back. It's smarter than the church. It knows the storyline. It's like he made man in his image, so man would begin to exert his image on earth, receive the kingdom, be salt, be light, bring the change. The God of peace crushes Satan under his people's feet. Okay, so remember that was 821, the one that started here, Albany, Salem, went all the way across the United States like you were seeing there just a moment ago. And it says, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. So that was part of the promise. It was 821. You have the seatbelt put across the United States. And it says, my sons and daughters are going to rise and shine. And I say that that's one way it's saying it. But I want, you to, I want to read that one more time. The creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty, again, not to anybody, not of Jesus, of the children of God. That's why he's telling us over and over, rise, shine, take authority, stand up, be salt, be like, we give no glory to our maker, to our father, to say, no, he does it, he does it. It's as bad as your 30-year-old child who lives with you won't do anything, he won't do it at a job, is like, no, you take care of me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> does that make you happy as a parent? We have a freeloading body of Christ. And we're saying, no, we're just being humble. You're not being humble. You're being a stinking freeloader. Not you. Nobody here. <laughs> we get liberty. We get glorious liberty. And creation itself responds. Creation itself enters into the next level of liberty. I mean, there's a whole message. You're like, What's, what, is, what is that? It is worth a whole message, but I'll have to leave that because we don't have time for that. But it's awesome just to think about what God is saying here as far as us and our responsibility. Okay, Let's see if there's a couple more points before we get into our prophetic act. Notes scratched up all over the place. Okay, why is it seven? Yeah, that's what. So why are we doing seven instead of Elisha said do it five or six? Well, clearly the five or six, he was saying like at least five or six. But seven, we tie in with our assignment, the seven mountain mandate. What Jesus said when he said, you are the light, he said exactly about the light, put it on a candlestick, means he needs seven types of light, seven candles. It wasn't one, it wasn't tell them about Jesus and they get saved, that's one light. But God of government, God of media, God of education, God of economy, et cetera, et cetera. There are seven Ways that he reveals his love and light and character in heaven. And he said, in that very same message, we didn't address it this morning, but I don't know if people realize that the Beatitudes, the salt of the earth, be light, and your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, is all part of his first great message. And the masses, the crowds, after they're healed, they stay with him hours and listen to the whole thing. Because though they came to him originally for healing and deliverance from demons, they wanted to know, we just need to know what your philosophy is. What, what are you about? What are you talking about? And they stayed with him for all of it because it's fascinating. Because he tells them, and when you pray, pray this way. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Government, like it is in heaven, on earth. Media like it is in heaven, on earth. Creativity, like it is in heaven, on earth. Family, like it is in heaven, on earth. Et cetera, et cetera, the seven areas. So, this is the original message from Jesus. He's not backed off of it, he's not going to. 
And this is something we're learning to align with. And what we're going to do today is activate those because that's pretty much, I think, the reason the, all you who are here, it was a sellout a couple of weeks, I think. And most of you, we found out over 90% of you are from the West Coast. So it's not like the Eastern people, like, uh, you know, they're coming like to rescue you all because you're all in so much trouble. You're like, no, we have faith for our own land. There are seven mountains, there are seven spirits of God. And according to the scripture, according to Revelation, the seven spirits of God or the seven eyes of God are the seven spirits of God that looks, we connected even with the Chronicle scripture, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the whole earth looking for those, looking for sons and daughters who don't say you do it all, who will partner with him in bringing his kingdom on earth. So that's, that's going to be why we're going to the seven, because we want to understand the seven, and we want you to feel it on every one. It's like, okay, are we done to seven? We don't want to just do seven. We want to do it with conviction. <laughs> okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. Let's see. Oh, okay. So... I was going to see how controversial this is, but I think for y'all, it won't be. I was, I was loving seeing the drums there. They say Jehu, you know? Who was Jehu? He's the guy that easily took out Jezebel. Speaking of, we're saying Jezebel has said, this is, this is my home, this is my stronghold. And, and so we have Sunil there from his Jehu drums, like, no, you're not. And so, you know, part of my, if my book rise, I have the principality is Jezebel over arts and entertainment. It's also one that hangs over the wicked witch of the West is Jezebel as well. And the archangel for that mountain and for the region is Jehudio. You're like, where'd you get that from? Well, it's from the book of Enoch. I don't even know if I got it from there originally, but the Lord's had me, as you know, in the book of Enoch this year, and it's amazing. Enoch talks several times about the seven mountains, and he talks about Jehudiel. And he's the principality, and why is he the, the principality from our side? He is the archangel. He's the one that has, he makes Jezebel run easily. We want to realize that In 1 Kings 17 and then 18, yeah, he's like, he's susceptible to Jezebel. And he's, he's like, an angel comes and gives him a cake. He had some strength. It was supposed to last him for 40 days. The first account of angel food cake in the scriptures. <laughs> and, and yet he, he, he literally quits. So the Lord has to reassign the assignment. And he gives it to Elisha. And then Elisha is the one that then sends a man to Jehu, says, you're the king, go take out Jezebel. And so Jezebel, who made even Elijah, there's a whole story there we can't go into. I was trying to see if I had time, but I don't. Okay, there's a why Elijah would give up, why he would be uh, susceptible there, and why Elisha wouldn't be, and why Jehu wouldn't. So you see, Jehu comes here, we we're not going to read the story, but Jehu comes, and he see, it says, Jezebel comes out onto the porch, and she's all painted up, and says, oh, look who's been, she's used to having authority over men. And Jehu says, throw her down, and they throw her down, the dogs eat her, like, no drama. It's in Hollywood, but no drama. That was and so... And it was amazing. And so the Lord spoke to me when he, there was a whole revelation. Was, I could take 30 minutes just on Jehudio and why he would be the archangel over this region and over the Mountain of Arts Entertainment. His name, Jehudio, means the glory goes to God. That's how you have authority over Jezebel. That's why those who want to be used by the Lord in the Mountain of Arts and Entertainment have to go under that identity. If you're still needing to scratch an itch of your fame, it's like 
You're just not going to succeed there. So you have to go. The glory goes to God. That's why you're there. That's why you serve him. That's why you're creative, etc., etc., etc. But I believe the Lord told me tonight that Jehudiel is here. And, and he's going to be watching our prophetic acts as well. And he's going to be, ooh. He's going to be assigned some things and he's going to be assigning because he has a massive army under him. And this is going to be a big deal. This is going to be a big deal. And it matters not, what we're going to go to in about two minutes here is, is not about feeling some. It doesn't matter if you feel goosebumps. You don't need to laugh, fall out, break out in gold or feathers. This is, it's, there's something about just obeying. I think Andrew was going into that, some of his stories early on is like, I didn't feel it, but it's like, got to give him at least the obedience. And I'm thinking if the Lord set this, this thing up, even if, even if, I feel it now, but even if we didn't feel a thing of it, it's like just because the Lord's like giving us an invitation at this time, he knew we we're going to be this close to our election. And he's like, I'm giving you this story of Elisha. Who, and I'm telling you, I responded to the king that had authority. And every one of you, he has made us kings and priests to our God. He is the king of kings. We have all been delegated authority. This is what, so we're kings here. So what we're going to do today is as kings, I say kings and queens, but we're all kings. And so this, this, this is, we want to take it with that level of importance, not trying to feel something, but trying to be obedient. And then, okay, we got the goods. But I tell you a lot about the, or something about the archangel. It's just like, you have to know whatever the enemy has, that our side has the greater version of it. You go, oh no, Jezebel. Jehudio has literally no problem at all with Jezebel. It's like Jehu did. It's like, just throw her down. So Jehu, that's why the name even follows uh, as well today. And so I believe we already did some roaring and taking down. And I felt, I, Andrew, I, I, he, was, he was not over his head at all. The Lord said, no, he's right in the authority realm I've given him. When he was cast, casting out the witchcraft that's come against us, this region, our president, the nation, and he did it in conjunction and joining with us, but he was definitely within his authority realm of doing that. So we've done some things, and there's a follow-up to that right now. All right, I'm sure we're ready for it now. <clears throat> seven Ninevehs, seven Salems. Okay, so this is what we do. All right, let's stand. And that's just so you can sit. No. <laughs> so you understand we've done the first part. The way that there's something. So from what I understand, even this whole idea of strike the ground with arrows, what's that about? There, there was, it was supposed to be a prophetic act or it was superstition. You hit the ground with your arrows and it releases something, but you do it on the ground. And it's got to be you on the ground and, you, and you're, you're releasing something that goes and it shifts and changes things. Okay, so... Here's what we got to do. I'm not even sure how to facilitate this yet, but uh, I'm, I'm figuring it out. Um, hold the spirit. So what we need to do, okay, and I know it's going to be hard with chairs there and some of you over 30 and all that stuff. But what we want to, I've got one idea we can do is when, we, when I'm just going to release you in a moment. And, and, but I gotta, first I got to build a little rumble among us and make sure we're not, we're not like just sleepy when we're doing this. We, yeah. We got to, we probably almost need Andrew to lead another roar here, but we, you know, we can do without it. But, you know, begin to hear some drums in the spirit and you're, 
da dum 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 something, you know. You're just like, you, you got to connect to something. And you just feel some passion. you gotta, you got to feel some, I'd almost call the drummers up here, but I don't think they're here. And then they take over and we wouldn't hear us. So it's best, 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 we, don't, best we don't do that. But are you with me? Do you believe that this could really matter? Yeah. Like, we'll look back and say, this is the day we did it. And a, an obedient prophetic act, counting on the Lord and his armies to take care of the rest. And we want it to go with us, our clear intentions. Seven mountains, all our nation. And if there's faith out there from listeners to let it go into their nations, go there as well. We need our greater weapons. The kingdom of God is not just words. It's power, and the power comes from him. And it is this whole stepping into the impossible realm and believing that. So, okay, here's what we do. Elizabeth saying compassion from Elizabeth. If you can't physically reach to four, you could do a, a stomp. Because he didn't say how you strike. That's correct. He didn't say strike with your hands. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. We want... To, like you could... You know, practice a couple like. Okay, that's a good idea. Strike it. I just realized you didn't say strike with your hands. We want to be able to hear it here. Okay, and you don't have to stop at seven, but you do not want to stop at three. This is not a polite thing. If somebody stops at three beside you, elbow him hard. Say, do not break the anointing mojo here. This is, I, I just remembered. I don't need, so have you ever, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you say a phrase, or let's just say, um, uh, okay, when you think of the months of the year, does a mental picture come to mind? Okay, well that happened, that's happened to me when I hear certain scriptures. The scripture, and I can't think of where the verse, uh, the address of it is, but uh, the New Testament, when it says, and, and the place where they prayed was shaken. I, I just connected a dot because I promise you, God is my witness right now, that every time I've heard that verse or thought it, always the picture of the Northwest of the United States comes into my mind. And I never made that connection until this moment just now. And I just feel like God's saying, the place where we prayed shall be shaken. Come on. All right. I'm going to count the three and just make sure you pass seven or get to seven and get ready. But feel it. All right. Let's, let's get, mm, let, do some. Mm, uh, 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 one, two, three. Whoa! Whoa! Ah! Whoa! Yeah! Whoa! Okay, I am sure we will not be chastised for being passive. I'll stand in for Elisha and say, you've done well. <clears throat> Whew. Whew. All right, <clears throat> about lost my voice too. <clears throat> Must be the end of the conference. Okay, Holy Spirit saying a couple more things. So stay there though. Many of you have been part of the activation of the seven signs for the seven mountains. We're going to do that right now. And so what I'm going to do, you don't have to overthink it, 
And I just feel like the Lord said that some of you just broke ground because this wasn't just for your nation, it was for you. And so he can now show you something he didn't show you before. Like he's gonna add another mountain or another power. This is between him and you. So this is gonna be Holy Spirit communicating to you. So I'm just gonna ask you, let me take one more breath. I was getting into that. I was not going to be accused of being passive. <clears throat> so, if anybody's like, no, he's hypnotizing. Somebody said that because they've been meeting. So I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing you under my power. No, nothing. This is Holy Spirit. So I'm just going to say the seven things. And you just be, again, if you're ready to receive that, just your hands out this way. And yeah, there's going to be reasons some of you don't need to hear it again or whatever. That's not the focus right now. It's just he wants to pour out some new power. He wants to tell you about an expanded assignment on a certain mountain. So the Lord wants to tell you about an assignment you have on the mountain of economy, a business gifting, entrepreneurial. Right now, as I'm speaking, and it'll be more in just a minute when I ask the Lord to release the sign, that's when it's supposed to happen, but your right hand, your right arm is gonna go numb. Or it'll begin to violently shake. Right arm numb, mountain of economy. If you feel that, on your left hand or arm, it goes numb. It's mountain of arts and entertainment, but he's telling you you have a creative gift and he is freshly anointing it even right now. Even if he's told you about that before. If you feel a hand on your head, mountain of government, you may not even want that call, it doesn't matter. <laughs> kind of a sign you're supposed to go there. I'm just kidding. But hand on your head, mountain of government. His, I mean, literal. Not like I think I feel wind. It's a hand on your head. If your feet begin to go hot or you feel it start going numb up your legs, mountain of media. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Mountain of media, your feet. If... Suddenly, as I'm talking, and when I, I'm actually going to blow in the microphone in a moment, and that's when he's really going to release the signs. But if suddenly tears begin to come out of your eyes, it means he's taking a tear from his heart, his compassion, he's putting it in yours, and he's expanding your horizons, your anointing for the mountain of family. Tears, mountain of family. If Suddenly, you're hit with joy. That makes no sense. He's telling your primary assignment, mountain of religion, the church. You can have a call more than one mountain. Oh, mountain of education. If your eyelids begin to flutter, you can't even fake this stuff. Like if your eyelids, and if you're not sure, like, oh, something's moving there, you can elbow the person beside you and say, are my eyes fluttering? Mountain of education, teaching anointing, something there. This is to start a whole conversation with the Lord. It does, this is not the end of a conversation. This is the start. So, did I get all seven? Media, economy, government, education, family, arts, retirement, religion. Okay, so Holy Spirit, I ask that you would release these signs across this room and to those who are watching this is for you as well it always goes whoever's watching this at the same time it's live even if you watch it 10 weeks from now so when i blow holy spirit let your breath be felt in this place you confirming to your sons and daughters according to what you want them to now know let that be released in this place now <laughs>
right arm numb, shaking economy. Left arm numb, shaking arts and entertainment. Hand on your head, government. Feet on fire, starting to go numb. Media, tears, mountain of family, joy. Mountain of religion, eyes fluttering, mountain of education. Just receive for a moment. Release, 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 release. Seven spirits of God move in this place. Each one of the seven spirits of God works with one of those. Jesus. Okay, you can put your hands down and look at me. Let's take quick inventory. If you felt your right arm go numb or start shaking, just wave it at me right now. Okay, a lot, maybe 100. If you felt your left arm begin to shake or go numb, wave it at me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, another, a lot, 100. If you felt the hand on your head for government, wave your hand at me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Amen. If tears just came suddenly, started coming down your eyes, move your hands, wave your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. Again, seems like another hundred. Wow, that's good. Okay. Um, joy. Primary call, mountain of religion. If you had that, just wave your hand at me. What, isn't this crazy? Like five people. Where do you think he wants us showing up? He's like, I got enough anointing in the church. I need it out the seven mountains. I'm not saying, but go ahead. That's good for you to, and you can be called to more than one thing. Okay. I know I've forgotten. Media. Education. Did we go? Your eyelids started doing this thing. Raise your hand. Okay. One, two, three. Ooh, a bunch of education. Thank you, Jesus. More. Whew. Yeah, I knew that was a big one. So, um, okay. Did I get another one? Media. Feet. Hot feet or your legs started going numb. Raise your hand. like Wave your hand like this. All right. Another 75 or so. Thank you, Jesus. I just don't want to forget when I'm done. Media, economy, religion. I think I got them all. Okay, this is the last thing I have to tell you, so there's no confusion. There's four different ways you can be called to any one of the mountains. Because some of you are like, what? Because some of you just got to redirect. Some of you are like, yeah, he's been telling me that forever. Some of you go, uh, it's like, redirect. I didn't, I didn't know that. But you can be called as a protagonist, meaning you're who you would think would be. They're like, his government is like, you're a politician, you're maybe run for office, but you could be called number two as an advisor or a friend to someone who's there. Number three, you could be called as an intercessor for someone who's there. Number four, you could be called as a financer for something or someone who's there. So this that happened just now just starts a conversation with the Holy Spirit. And you can be called for all four. So that applies for all of the mountains. And then especially, this is where you ask the Lord as well, because some of you, he's telling you about your child or your grandchild. And, and so he's telling you, I need you to look after that. You know who it is, it's your granddaughter. It's her, she's 11, somebody here, you got an 11-year-old granddaughter, she's very creative, and he's like, that's why I was giving you the sign on the left. You have creativity too, she inherited, but watch over what's in her. We arise and shine by caring who we are. Last point, this connects, it was beautiful what Andrew was talking about, that your scroll, ultimately, the way you know you fulfill it, is you're carrying the express image of Jesus there. So like, the way it applies to what I'm talking about here is if he's really called you to be an entrepreneur, but you're like, no, that's the world. I, we leave all that, it's, you know, love of money. It's like, oh, and you don't understand that we need ministers of economy, ministers of wealth. And so you've been trying to make it as uh, uh, 
you know, a government person and it hasn't been working, you're not going to find your expressed image of Christ trying to be who you're not. So these things work together. But the greater goal is for the expressed image of Jesus to be revealed in you. But so this, this, everything that's happened today, Andrew getting you to go after your scroll and what that is, and what I'm telling you now, these are just different hints, doors, openings, where he's, he's so, I'm telling the Holy Spirit, just tell me right now, just, he's like saying, tell them, I so want to partner with them now in society. I don't want any one of them to be a spectator. He says, not a one of you is too old. Not one. Not one of you is too sick. Not one of you is too poor. He prefers using the weak, small, foolish things of this world to do great things. All right, I took longer than I was going to. Let me just close in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for what you've done during this day. Lord, I just ask that even the prophetic acts, decrees we have done would be, would be sanctioned by the courtroom of heaven. That what has taken place here all day, Lord, would be sanctioned by heaven. Lord, I thank you for the love you have for these, your sons and daughters. These who couldn't get tickets fast enough to come to this event to say, we stand in the gap. We represent faith in the West Coast. And again, everybody online for wherever other coast or other nation, you don't have to, it doesn't take away from that. You stand for that too. So we're not, I'm recognizing something unique the Lord is doing here, but he's wanting and he is doing something everywhere. So Lord, we bless this place. We ask from this day forward that the city of Albany, Oregon would carry an open heaven as never before. That the destruction to the strongholds of Aphek, the destruction to the strongholds of Jezebel that you are taking care of. We're not going mano a mano. We're asking that Jehudiel and the hosts of heaven would be released and tear down these strongholds of the enemy and that even this city from this day forward would change in a demonstrable way where even churches who don't even love the holy spirit even though they don't say that they would be surprised by the holy spirit they would be surprised by the spirit of worship that would break out in their meetings lord do something remarkable here in oregon do something remarkable in the West Coast. Let this day be marked for posterity. Let this day be marked for posterity. Let this day be marked for posterity. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So good, honey. Just on the practical side, I had several conversations throughout the day with with different ones of you wondering, like, I don't, just, I don't even know where to start on my mountain. Like, I just don't even know where to start. And I just felt the Lord say, start with me, start with him. Become an expert and become intimate with that aspect of who he is. You know how the Lord will like kind of take you through a season where maybe most of the time you pray, it's kind of to the Father directly or maybe to Jesus or maybe a real focused time on Holy Spirit. These seven aspects of who God is, like arts and entertainment, focus on him as creator and just start speaking to him as your creator. And every scripture you can find on who he is as creator, our resources, we have a chapter in every book we've ever written on each of these seven aspects of who God is. Even our books that are out of print, they're on Audible or they're on PDF, on Kindle. There are ways that you can just immerse yourself in that aspect of who God is. And out of that overflow, I promise good, you, good. he will give you a practical assignment that feels like, I can do that and I want to do that. It will open a door, but it starts with being an expert on that aspect of him. It's good. <clears throat> I didn't want to leave without doing this, but I felt... Um, I felt the Lord give me a phrase for you, Johnny, and it was, um, and, and I think you already know that you're a statesman. You've heard that before, I'm sure. But I, I heard the Lord say you were a statesman of the ancient paths 
for a new wineskin era. And I saw a door opening even tonight over you, and I saw new realms of, of I, don't want to, I don't know what a statesman does, uh, but, but whatever that is, you're doing that through new doors. And specifically, I saw the United States government, and I saw that, that, that there was going to be a recovery of the ancient paths that were left long ago being brought back into the United States. And you were gonna be one of them that would be a statesman to them, an ambassador of the kingdom. And uh, I, don't, I just feel, can we uh, pray that over? over? <laughs> Elizabeth, why don't you come up too? Well, Father, we just, um, we just say thank you for this couple and they who have walked faithfully and, and endured and, and pioneered and just took risk, great risk. And we just thank you for the faith that they have uh, walked out and have demonstrated and the love that they have displayed. And Lord, we just thank you for them. Thank you, God, for what is being, um, that's already been given to them, but I even see, God, what's even being mantled afresh upon them for this new day. And I just pray, God, uh, today, uh, open those doors. We say into the United States government, open the doors, that these would be a, a uh, wow, I, I just see wisdom, the crown of wisdom that's being given, um, that you will carry such wisdom for the United States in the days ahead. Lord, however you see to it to open that door, we just say yes, and we agree with it. Let your will be done. Accomplish all that you have purposed and planned in their lives. We bless them and honor them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you, Johnny and Elizabeth. Thank you, Andrew and Kelly, the whole group. Thank you for everybody. Thank you to the worship team. Dave, thank, thank the other guys. We're going to tear into those restrooms soon, so we'll let you know when the next meeting is. God bless you. Have a great night, everybody. <laughs>